Hey everyone and welcome back. I'm hoping you're having a great week and there's a lot of things to really talk about right now as a Milan fan. There's a lot of um, potential negativity going around uh, the fan base right now. There's a lot of um, extreme reactions as to what's happening in, happening in the transfer market, not just for us, but for, for other teams. And obviously as competition increases in Syria, we can't help but be protective of our spot and the uh, potential momentum that we might be losing in the competition. Uh, before we get on to today's crux and the, you know, the meat of the video, which we'll be talking about that and how we are you know, what's our model and sort of having to reaffirm what our ideology is as moving forward as a club. I do want to talk about a few things. Firstly, the event this game. Um, very underwhelmed from that performance. I did feel like that um, that was a waste of opportunity for three points. When you really take the context of the game, they weren't, they're not been playing good football. We saw that, not even a shot on target from Juventus. I know the pitch was a disgrace and they are looking into fixing that, but there's so many games being played on it recently and and also going to be in uh, in February. It's going to be really hard to get that sorted. Um, it's a wasted opportunity, really, and makes so much pressure in the derby fixture against Inter Milan after the international break. Um, other than that, it's good news coming out about Teo Hernandez's impending uh you know, extension about to happen. We've been waiting for this for quite a few months now. I talked about getting him done on the contract extension because he is one of those 2024 expiry players like Rafael Leal, like Ben Acer. We have to get him done and, and looks like Teo is the first one to get done. And I think the next one that's very important is obviously Rafael Leal, who's been our sort of star player this season for, you know, that spark, that electricity on the attack. So he is someone that we have to lock down long term. Um, other than that, really, I think we're signed, signed to be uh, signing a, a young striker um, from Red Star Belgrade. By the time this video comes out, it'll probably be announced by then. Um, you know, not much to know about him, really. He seems to be the Pellegrini replacement. And um, and that's kind of like going to go into the, the topic of the video. Has this been a very underwhelming January transfer market so far? Have we lost pace with the rivals? And are we letting competition catch up with us? So we're going to really get into the meat of that video and have to remind ourselves of the philosophy of the Milan project that we're seeing right now. Okay, so the Milan project. I mean, it's been talked many times by Paolo Maldini about what our project is. You have to look back at the past. You have to look back at the mistakes of the past. Um, when Elliot took over the club from the Chinese, you know, investors, if you even want to call them that, um, spending a lot of money that wasn't theirs. Um, even prior to that, Berlusconi running up debt. It, it's been a very poorly run club for the best part of a decade probably going into the point where Elliot took over and finances were not really looked into um, to the point where we have to look back at like even like FFP trying to like ban us out of, well, banning us out of UEFA competitions, laughing stocks around Europe, the fallen giants. We were all that. And, and I think fans overreacting to the point that there hasn't been a level of progression have to really look back at those times and really have to sort of... Um, just look back at what was really embarrassing times for us. And we were nowhere near competing for top four finishes or even potentially winning the league or potentially winning the Coppa Italia. I know we got to a few finals along the way, but it was, you know, we, we were really kidding ourselves thinking that we were just pretenders really. But at least there's a project here. And that project was that exist of and was that consist of. That is what Maldini says, you know, targeting young players, you know, turning, we're not, going players that have already been found out. We're obviously turning players into studs and there's evidence of that throughout the complete, you know, entirety of our squad and and, and the way we're moving in the transfer market. We've, we've gone from signing players for like 30 million euros. Obviously there are exceptions like Tomori and if you qualify for top four, you get that. And we target players which are like five, 10, 15 million euros if we can get that deal done. And obviously if the contracts match up. Um, the extensions are something that is quite frustrating. Obviously, um, Talking about Rafael Leal, Teo Hernandez, Benacer being those players that need to get a contract extended because they are Maldini brought in players. Players before that, Kessi, Donnarumma, Chahanoglu. I get it. They're not they're not part of his model, so they don't. You know, they were given higher contracts to begin with, so it's like it's quite hard. So I would only judge contracts based off those players mentioned before, Teos and your Leals and your Benacers, not so much the players that preceded that, like Romagnoli's and your Kessis, etc. Um, now, obviously, we, along the way, you can't just build a young squad. And Maldini's alluded to this many times. He needs to bring in experience. Simon Kaya, Ibrahimovic, Florenzi, um, even like Bakayoko, Giroud. These are players that we need, regardless if you think they're right or not to play. They're players we need to, you know, create an overall balance of this squad. And, um, you know, when things are going tough, we have those experienced players to keep a level head. Um, but obviously, what's missing from that? What's missing from that is spending a lot of money. 
we can't go out and spend a lot of money on, you know, Ala Vlahovic's, and we'll come on to that in a second, and your and your big marquee signings. And I know as fans, it's not that we want that, and we are realistic as fans to be like, oh, we don't expect us to be competing with Man City's and and, and, and and signing for top players, but it's just that that bridge in between that are there opportunities that management aren't taking up. And we don't know. We don't know whether, you know, they have gone into it and maybe the contractual um you know, desires of the player is too much for us and our project. Um, if the agent fees are too much, we don't know, but we can only trust that what they've been doing so far has been successful and they wouldn't not take an up, up, up an opportunity if it wasn't, you know, presented and, and, and in favour for us. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of things like that. And I, I think I get the frustration as fans and we'll come on to sort of that momentum thing or are we losing that? But I think we do need to talk about like the rivals in Syria and how we sort of compare ourselves to them. So the main rival I'm going to really bring up is Juventus here because it's obviously the Vlahovic deal going down. It's We're looking at them. We're looking at how bad they're playing. Are we losing momentum on, on them in this precious moment? Um, especially when you really consider that last performance where we were the more better side and we have been for quite a while now. And since Ronaldo's gone, it's a massive fall from grace. So they're in a point of desperation that's when we need to look at that as we're not in this point of desperation where we have to go out and spend 70 mil. Their model was based off a lot of risk. And this is kind of like the topic of it. Does risk always equal reward? Um, they're in a point where they've put in a lot of risk here. If they don't get a top four finish, it's, it's a catastrophe for the club. And the, and the way that model was built up, you know, high wages being paid out. It's bad enough, like, you know, they're willing to take that risk. I mean, let's, let me just like shorten things down there. They're willing to take that risk right now and spend the money that they are going to get if they get top four and sign someone like Vlahovic because if they don't get that money, now, let alone the fact that they've not even paid out players like Chiesa, uh, you know, still got players like Ramsey on the books getting paid a lot of money, the model's completely going to get crushed and they know the things at play here. And I think that's the difference. We're not under that pressure cooker scenario. And I don't think Maldini, Maldini and management ever want to put us in that scenario, at least for now, where we have a lot of high wages, um, you know, impending transfer fees that we have to pay. And if we miss out on the top four, it's not going to kill us. And we and we don't have to sell a player, you know, in a, in a summer market where they, if say if Juventus don't get stopped top four still, they probably have to sell someone like Dilit to get a lot of money in. And, um, and it slows down their progression. So risk doesn't always equal reward. And we should remember that, especially when it comes to our past, you know, signing Piontek and Paqueta in, um, in a, I think it was a January transfer market of, I believe, 2018, 2019, around that time. Um, but yeah, 35 mil euros spent on each of those players. Did that equal a success? No, it didn't. It didn't. So I think we have to take everything, you know, there's going to be risk and reward and it works both ways. If, if you run that risk and it works, then fantastic. You get the money that comes with it. But if it doesn't work, then you're in trouble. Um, and we've seen that, you know, all far too well now. Um, so our scenarios, especially if you take the Juventus' history and how they've been building this squad and building themselves, perennial Champions League qualifying side, a league, you know, winning side, they have money in the bank. They have history in the bank to obviously where they've built to themselves right now. But we're at this point right now where they've staggered and we're building momentum. And the question is, is have we, have we, you know, dropped the bag on this momentum here? Would it have been, are we better off signing that experienced centre back now than waiting to sign Botman in, um, in the summer? Probably, I feel like that is something that we have a case for. I think, um, for me personally, we're running a massive risk for not getting top four now, especially if we lose to Inter and Juventus, you know, there'd be four points off if they win the next game. Um, and Atalanta don't like look like slowing the pace and Napoli don't look like slowing the pace. It's a massive risk right now we're taking. Um, I just think that financially it's not going to kill us, but for Elise's fans and ambition that it sucks. It, it will suck if we don't use this momentum wisely. And, um, and, and maybe we're just we're thinking too much economically and Maldini is at least in this case. And it's like, you know, I don't know. As fans, it, it, it does, it's, not, it's not great to see other teams getting players in a market where we can see the holes that we need to plug. We know what holes we need to plug. But, and I think management know it as well, but it's just not on the same, same time scale. Um, and it's whether we just have to understand that and get get, get real with it and know our past and know there's reasonings behind this. Um, and just have to move on from it really it's just it's annoying but it is what it is right now so that's it guys for today i just wanted to talk about our model um really sort of 
trying to get some context behind it all really um i don't really I don't, I, i'm on the fence with this you know i understand that um you know this is the model that we've been told about we if we if you don't know it by now you should know it by now there's no point crying about other teams signing players and we haven't signed any players we should know this by now um expect nothing and that way you'd always get that bonus um but what we do know is at least the project is working we're targeting young players they're growing the team's growing on the pitch we're playing good football you know there's there seems to be great harmony between management and the coach and the players so we can't really complain about that. The only things we can really look at with a bit of a bit of critique and especially going forward is if management handles, say, contractual uh, issues. And, and, you know, that's a massive warning sign for me. But we still don't, you know, I'll only judge that when it's that, that occasion. Um, when it comes to the transfer strategy, I understand our philosophy and I understand the movements that we make. So it's one of them ones where until it's completely unsuccessful, I will not judge it and sort of hammer home on it. But as fans, our ambition and our past as a Milan fan it is always to be, you know, what's best, sign top players or even players that are going to give us a bit of a bit of um, excitement coming into a game and seeing how they're going to do things. Um, but yeah, I mean, I will always be surprised <laughs> by how when we sign these low key players, how they actually do add something to this side. So I think... I'm kind of a bit on the fence on both of them. I don't want mediocrity, but at the same time, I don't expect um, you know us to go out and sp always signing 30 million euro players. So um, I'm in between that sort of gap. So I, I do understand the perspective with frustrated Milan fans, but I also do understand the project that we have in front of us. I think that's what I'm trying to get at here. And I just think it's you're better off as fans to get down with that as well. And I know you're in we're all entitled to our opinion. I'm here giving you my opinion. But I just think you're better off not getting frustrated and hoping that this team continues to click on the pitch. We've seen enough of that. They've warranted enough good faith from us. Um, so hopefully we can go out the season and match our objectives. And hopefully still, we need to win that derby game against Inter Milan to give us a chance to, you know, a title run. So that's that's the hope. Um, so yeah, we're going to just sign off with that thing, guys. And uh, until next time, Forza Milan.